Uh, welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, July 2nd. I'm Courtney Savala. This is Tex. Derek is off today, but you're in for a treat. We have former Houston Dynamo forward and owner of Pitch 25 Beer Park, Brian Ching. Welcome to Houston Life. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited. I know. It's so great to see you. We've known each other for a long time. I was telling, I'm going to throw yeah. something at you. I was telling the staff a story the other day. It was an early morning. I don't remember why you came in, but it was something... Um, I think it was newly after your retirement with the Dynamo, and you came in bright and early on a Saturday morning, maybe it was Sunday, to talk about, um, I think it was probably the championship. And during the, dur on your way out, I said, well, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And you said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hop a plane right now. And I said, oh, my gosh, you're so dedicated. But yeah, yeah, I'm getting married. Do you remember that? <laughs> you, like, came to Houston, you came to the interview on Saturday morning, and you, like, hopped a plane to go get married. I do remember that. that yeah. That, it was a fun uh, little turnaround. It was a good time. We went to uh, um, Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Uh, and we ended up getting married down there. Yeah. That's so crazy. Well, I I love reconnecting with you, and we um, you're such a great ambassador for Houston. I mean, what an amazing career that you had with the Dynamo. I mean, what was that like to be a professional soccer player, right? <laughs> the funny thing is... I have to say I was a little disappointed at first because I wanted to be a professional surfer. You know, I grew yeah. up in Hawaii yeah. and, and surfing was my first love. My dad was a beach boy growing up in Waikiki and, and so I wanted to be a professional surfer. But, you know, I can't say, I, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. Don't right. get me wrong, but no, I, I fell in love with the game of soccer. My mom ended up saying, hey, why don't you play a sport? And I was like, well, what sport? You know, and like every mother, they're like, oh, soccer is safe, so let, let, go play soccer. Right, so I was right. like, all right, be my coach. And so anyway, so long story short, I ended up falling in love with the game and, and been able and been blessed to, to be able to travel the world and not only uh, travel the world, but travel the country and get to play a lot of soccer. It's so cool. I mean, your career highlights, if I could just brag on you for a second, most goals in Dynamo history, six-time MLS All-Star, 2007 Gold Cup champion. The list goes on and on and on. Can't forget the bicycle kick that you had. <laughs> Was that the first game? No. You, you did the, the several of them. The funny thing is, uh, so I've had two in my career, and uh, the funny thing is uh, I scored four goals in the first game. That's but right. The, the fifth goal was a bicycle kick, so everybody assumes that I scored a bicycle kick in that game as Okay, well, okay. It was, it was my teammate, so I can't really steal that one, although I always want to. But, right. Uh, no, it was good. So I, I ended up scoring a bicycle kick later on that year, and it was ended up goal of the year, which um, which was was awesome. Incredible. And <laughs> yeah. y'all, if you don't know what the bicycle kick is, I mean, it's liter it's a backwards yeah. kick, right? Yeah, you well, are yeah. flipping. The ball's over your head, and you, you then you end up kicking the ball while it's over your head. And I mean... Try not to hurt yourself on the fall on the ground, but... Right? You know, I, growing up in Hawaii, I, we grew up on the beach, right? Obviously, very blessed, but... Uh, so we practice it all the time, right? And the, the landing on the sand, it, it's, it's such It's a different thing. experience, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but, um, but being able to actually do it in a game, I mean, that's, you know, it's kind of a dream come true, and, you know, one of those things that does not a lot of people get a, actually an opportunity to even try. And what about the Dynamo fans here? Because uh, the fans are very serious about their soccer. You know, the, uh, they are. And they're very knowledgeable about yeah. their soccer, too. And, you know, I think they, they got a treat when we first came here because we were actually the best team while we were in San Jose. And then we moved here and we ended up winning the two championships. So they're a little bit spoiled. And then we went through a little bit of a rough patch. But yeah. now, you know, when I look at the team now, I, mean, I think the team is... Uh, has tremendous talent and upside. I, I think they're a really exciting team. They're a young team, a lot of young guys that can score a lot of goals, and they've scored more goals than we've ever had in the past, in the last years. They just, unfortunately, have given up a little bit too many goals, but uh, they're off to a great start this year. You know, I think they're right in the playoff hunt, and I expect them to make playoffs this year. And you're, uh, they play again tomorrow, and you're an ambassador for the team, is that right? Am I, am I putting yeah. words in your mouth? Okay. Yeah, so when I first retired, I, I didn't really know exactly what I want to do, you right. know, because you don't really have experience in too many other things other than kicking a ball around. And so, you know, I, I thought I wanted to kind of uh, be a president of a team one day. And um, so I, I'm fortunate enough that when the dash started, the, the year I retired, and so I, I got to kind of be the GM of that. And, and I enjoyed it, you know, and, and had a great time and learned a ton. You know, but also in that period, you know, I had a, a little son and, and, and that was like the biggest part of what I want to do these days is, is be a good dad. And, and so, um, you know, I know like running a team takes about 80 hours, 90 yeah. hours a week, you know, and, uh, and I just didn't have that um, drive to, to, to want to be away from my, fo my son so that much. So it kind of shifted focus a little bit and moved to be more of an ambassador for, for the team and the organization. And... Uh, 
you know, I, I, I'm enjoying it now. You know, I'm finding that right, perfect, you know, family balance, right. work-life balance, and uh, actually um, moved away and, and now um, like a financial advisor. So I just started that's this, incredible. <laughs> this year uh, with U.S. Capital Advisors. And so that's that's my full-time job, you know, okay. obviously an ambassador to Dynamo, and then obviously I have Pitch 25 and actually another concept that we, we'll talk about here. What I think is so great, Brian, is that, you know, you're from Hawaii, you moved around, you traveled all over the world for soccer, uh, you came here to play with the Dynamo, and you fell in love with the city. It's what I love about our sports teams mm -hmm. is um, you all become such great proponents of the city and you don't leave you stay here your family's here you know and yes. you know you create those roots which is very important and very um heartfelt you know like you want to be here you want these teams and you want our city to succeed and to thrive i mean you know that's why you also have your business and if you don't know pitch 25 uh wanted the coolest place in town to go uh not only hang out but to watch obviously sporting events and soccer games. We're going to have a, um, hopefully a, a camera shot of this a little bit later, but um, y you can go and watch the, the women's soccer match there today. Oh yeah, it's going to be a massive game here today, so I'm kind of looking forward to, to seeing the crowd that, that fills in there. But you know, for me, I think when I, when I retired, you know, obviously not knowing exactly what I want to do and then actually, you know, started, uh, thought there was a need for a big soccer bar that people yeah. would love. And, and it's more than just a soccer bar, right? I was, it's a great place to watch games. And one of the things that I like to do when I go to, to a bar um, or a restaurant is to be active. You know, I just want to be sitting there, sitting down. And so what we did was create opportunity for people to kind of be active. You know, Friday nights we have dodgeball, we have bubble soccer that we for, for free, we have axe throwing in there. Yeah. Um, we have so many different things that allow people to be active. And I think that's one of the things that people really kind of drawn to when they come to pitch. You know, obviously its size and, and the way we've built it out is, is, is different than anything else we've ever seen in the country. But, um, you know, I think that, that real being active aspect of it is really what uh, keeps people coming back. It's super important. Also, um, let's talk and let's brag about Chase, your little <laughs> son. I love how your face lights up. So cute. He's three and a half. He's three and a half. And, um, you know, he's just the happiest little kid. You know, you can see him here oh. he's kicking a soccer ball around. And, you know, he just loves everything with a, with a ball. And I've been pretty blessed that, you know, I feel like he's pretty athletic. I don't know yeah. a ton of three and a half year olds. <laughs> but, uh, you know, his, his mom's a yoga teacher and, and very athletic. And so, you know, this is him hitting the baseball out. This this one's my favorite right here. He yeah. Hits it over the fence. Home and run. And he's cheering, you know, and so he... You know, he, he just enjoys being active, you know, and he keeps me young again, you know, right. which, which is kind of, you know, dad, daddy get, doesn't let daddy get lazy too much. And then, you know, obviously being from Hawaii, I kind of want to teach him the surfing a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. So kind of our first little step and process into kind of getting it all going. Oh, my and, gosh. And, you know, uh, one of the things I'm just trying to instill in him is to uh, just practice. You know? Yeah. If you, want to, if you want to be good at anything, you got to practice. Absolutely. And, and so that's kind of one of the things I'm like. You know what is so great, too, I think, um, have you seen sort of the increase of fan following for soccer? Because, you know, obviously it's the world's sport, mm -hmm. right, football. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think, like, the U.S. is a little bit late to, to get on the bandwagon, if you will. Um, but, I mean, there's so many young girls playing soccer. That's why I love seeing, uh, you know, the women's team doing so well, right? They have these amazing role models, female role models, mm -hmm. sport models. Um, you're seeing kind of an increase in, in the soccer world here in the U.S.? 100%. You know, I, I think as you look at the evolution of the Major League Soccer, right, yeah. that, you know, we when I joined the league, we went from 12 teams down to 10 teams. You know, now uh, we're on the verge of, and actually when we only had 10 teams, there was only literally about three, three owners. You know, right. Now we're at thir uh, on our way to 34 teams eventually. Uh, you know, every team has its own owner. Uh, this, every team that kind of comes in the league has this unbelievable groundswell of following. Uh, the, the fans uh, are growing around the world. And I think by 2026, you're, you're definitely going to see soccer as, as, you know, I think right now we're on the verge of breaking into being, you know, one of the top premier sports. You know, right. I think there's always the, the, the football, the basketball, the baseball, you know, and, and I think hockey can kind of throw there with golf. But I think we're, you know, when you look by 2026 with, with the way that MLS is going and the way that everybody's playing soccer now, soccer is going to be breaking the top four uh, top sports yeah. in, in the country, you know, and, and then 
pulling along with that is is the NWSL, right? right. I mean, and and that's huge, you know. And I think it should be bigger than it is. And I'm I'm, I'm surprised that um, because when you look at the success of the women's national team right. Right, and the following that they get, it, it's unbelievable. But it has not translated to the local clubs other okay. than other than maybe Portland. You know, they're in this little anomaly where they kind of sell out every game too, which is fantastic. You know, but I think, you know, as as the MLS grows and gets better, more money is going to flow into the NWSL. And I think that uh, hopefully, you know, is going to spur a lot more uh, attention and, and, you know, get a viable league for these women to play. You know? Right, I, right. I think the owners that are kind of in it now are really at the forefront and, and really helping promote the game and, and helping it grow uh, in an area like when I started in MLS back it was was tough. Right, it yeah, really, tough to break it's through. It's really tough now. Yeah. So, you know, the owners are really taking a risk and, and buying on that. And I hope that the people, you know, that do watch the Women's World Cup, that, that are out at Pitch 25 for this game, uh, do go to the Dash because they, it's an amazing product. And, it really and when you're is. you're around with the players, I mean, if, if you get an opportunity and it's very, they're very personable, so it's very easy to, to create relationships with them. Um, it's... It's such a good product. Yeah. You know? um, and so, you know, I'm I'm rooting for them. You know, and, Absolutely. and I definitely want to see the US win today. It's going to be a tough tough game against uh, England, though. Right. Well, okay. So after the show, you want to get out to pitch 25. Uh, we have a, a live shot. You actually opened your doors a little bit early <laughs> to make way for. Uh, look at all the fans there yes. getting ready. They've got their seats ready at pitch 25. This is, of course, in Edo. East End backyard there, and um, what's so great is they these people there are getting ready to watch the U.S. women's team take on England, right? And that's at two o'clock. And you're projecting going to be a tough match. It's going to be a tough match. I think uh, before the World Cup started, I would say it would have been an easy match. But the way you see England uh, playing throughout the tournament and kind yeah. of growing in stature as as the tournament's gone on, just like the U.S. team has, uh, I think we, we're going to win. We better win. Yeah, uh, right, but, if you say it, right? But, uh, no, I, it's going to be a, a tougher match than I originally anticipated. So, you know, I think the big match was was the last one against, yes. against France. Yeah. Uh, France is obviously one of the favorite. They beat us 3-0 earlier in the year. So... Uh, I didn't really know, and I, everyone kind of viewed that as almost like the final. So it was very unfortunate that right. France ran into us in the quarterfinals. But, you know, great performance from our team. And I'm looking uh, for them to kind of build on that. And they've kind of built as the tournament's gone on. And I think that confidence uh, is really going to uh, carry them through to the final. Okay, so that game is coming up at 3 o'clock. Head over after Houston Life, though. you got to stay with us the whole hour. <laughs> Head over to Pitch 25 to watch the game. Also, um, we have a little rapid fire before we do a little soccer demo. Okay. Is that cool? Okay, okay yeah. so we, we just want to get to know Brian, okay? okay? So here's a couple questions for you. Um, dream vacation. Some place where there's surf right outside the, the hotel. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, walk out surf, right? Favorite thing about being a dad? Coming home and having a kid run up to you and just give you a big hug. Right, nothing better. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Me too. Hidden talent? Oh, I'd like to say singing, but my mom tells me not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm probably really not good at it. We'll, we'll keep it at singing. Um, do you have a pet peeve, things that bother you or something uh, that bothers you? Being late. Yep. You're the second person this week to say that. Least favorite chore? He's taking out the trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, where do you shop at the most? Like, are you a Costco guy? Are you a... To be honest, I, I never shop. You no. don't? Yeah, no, no. I, I just go to Kroger, whatever simple and easy. Kroger, okay. Kroger by the house. Uh, I think I know the answer to this one. Most memorable moment? Most memorable moment. Oh, um, there's two. But okay. one was scoring the uh, fi the a goal in the MLS Cup final in 2006, and then the second was being at the World Cup in Germany, just singing the national anthem. Oh. Uh, for some reason, I was like, "Wow, this is I'm from a little rock in the middle of the Pacific, and yeah. I'm here on the biggest stage, supporting one of the biggest, the best country in the world." Oh man, uh, it was, it was surreal was moment for yeah, sure. Cool. Okay, and yeah. how about a trick question? Okay. Okay. Soccer or football? <laughs> had to <Football>. ask. <laughs> <laughs> same answer, same answer. Okay, so one of the things about Dynamo is that you um, and soccer, you want to get out and just let people know that you could do this at home, right? Yeah. Get your kids moving? Yeah, so one of our initiatives is uh, Soccer Starts at Home. Okay. It's, it's by a guy, uh, his name's Tom Beyer. He uh, pretty much revolutionized soccer in, in Japan. And it's one of the reasons why they're all so, t so technical. And we're actually working with him. And his idea is to let your kids have a soccer ball at home. But 
Don't encourage them to kick it. <laughs> yes. Don't encourage them to kick it. Get them to just manipulate it and play with it. And so we can come over here. And yeah, let's check them out. Stuff, you so. know, we oh. cue, cue my kids. They're back with us again today. All right. We got you know, when you need some some kids, I can I can always call them in. So we got two little rock stars here today. Yes, right? Connor and AJ. Connor, AJ. All right. So so one of the first things, you know, parents at home, it's really easy. You just want to get your kids to get comfortable with the ball. One of the things about soccer is the more comfortable the kids are with the ball. You know, and it's just real simple little drills like this, you know, rolling the ball, rolling the ball, you know, and then you can you can kind of uh, you can kind of spice it up a little bit later on, you know, and then this is for parents, right? Obviously, you're not going to um, break anything. And that's right. the goal is to kind of get them to do the thing. So you just kind of really it, put your foot on. It. Yeah. So roll it on the outside and back in. Just <clears throat> yeah, there you go. So just put you your foot it. on the top, roll it to the side. Roll it to the side, yeah, and then just keep it, no, just keep it close, right there. So here, here we go. So what you want to do, right? I'm sorry, yeah, get your foot, finger. So we just want to go to the side and come back in, right? So it's really easy, keeping the ball nice and controlled. You don't want it flying around the house, right? And by doing these simple little drills, it kind of gets the kids very, very comfortable with the ball. Right. Right, and and then, then they start, you know, doing little things around the house, not hitting anything, obviously, right. not, not, not breaking anything, um, but that, the more that comfortable they get with the ball, it's shown that uh, their development, they develop a lot quicker. Okay. And it doesn't matter if they have a good coach or bad coach at the young ages once they get comfortable with the ball. And I would imagine, too, even just hand-eye coordination or not just using your feet, right? <laughs> well, not just you your feet. You can't do no. that in soccer. <laughs> no, no, but what, and, and what it is is, is once, they, once they master these little drills, it gives them little uh, accomplishments that they can be proud of. And the parents are a big part of this, and you just you got to encourage every time they can do a new little the trick or skill you kind of encourage that and it creates these positive right. pathways in their in in their heads so they become more confident kids uh, and so it goes kind of beyond soccer as well right and what so, about dribbling do we do any uh, is that the bouncing right that's the bouncing on the knee yeah right? well that's juggling that's juggling. juggling so no you don't want to do that in the house and okay. especially not learning because you'll break a lot of things right so the, the real concept is just trying to keep the ball close do little little um, manipulations on the ball, step overs, and, and keeping the ball and getting them really comfortable with the ball. And then, you know, when you go outside, then you can start the juggling and things okay. like that. But yeah, like moves, <laughs> See, so that's, yeah, but that's where you gotta, as early age as you can, you encourage them just to do the little simple things. And then when they kind of master those things, then it jumps up. Yeah. Or you hit Brian Ching in the or you could do the soccer ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a perfect rainbow, right? Yeah. But, but then once they master the little ones, then they get up to that and then they start mastering those as well. So yeah. your, your son's already ahead of the curve. Well, I don't know. He does like to play some soccer for sure. So this is some good test. Uh, you can also see how well they get along, right? We, we can. This is witnessing this on live t TV. But those are great. Um, get out and get, get your kids moving um, in the house. I know it's hot or stick them outside for a couple minutes. Let them sweat it out. It's yeah. always good. No. So the thing is to, to have smaller balls and okay. have their own balls. Right. So, that, so they don't they're not fighting they're like not this. Doing this yeah so then they kind of do their own little things and they master all that so awesome so those so that's that's the real goal to to the development of soccer okay we're going to take the ball away from them they're just going to take over the studio